Hey guys, I'm um, going to talk a bit today about the three principles that I teach by. And these three principles, basically for me, they govern everything I need to do, uh, or I need to focus on to, to build a very powerful, repeatable goal swing that I can put on a spot uh, time and time again. Put energy on the ball, a certain amount of energy, whether that be a little bit of energy on a little chip shot or a lot of energy on a full driver. The same three principles are going to govern the motion. Then really the rest of it, uh, the varying, varying shots that I'm needing to play, to play around a golf, the varying uh, trajectories, uh, different shapes and all of that sort of stuff, it's all secondary to these three principles as far as the swing itself. If you just have this one simple idea for a swing, which I'm going to hopefully, it's going to seem simple to you after this explanation, um, then really you can use that motion to hit basically any golf shot you can imagine. Uh, so that'll be the topic for a, a further video. Um, I think if there were a fourth principle that I can add to these three principles, it would be there are certain principles of aiming um, and where we are in space. So I might touch on that at the end of this, uh, just to preview a, a future video. So what I'm going to try to do is just I'm going to try to define each principle um, as clearly as I can in and of itself and then try and put those three principles together for you into a cohesive, coherent message for you to be able to see the swing as simply as I see it now today. So the first uh, thing I'd like to talk about is containment. So I'm just going to get um, straight into the containment principle um, and define that as clearly as I possibly can. For me, the idea of containment is to, I want to have this entire golf club in a line so that the face represents a line and the shaft represents a line to that face. Okay, so at, at any stage, if I open the face, I've still got a line from, let's say, the underside of the shaft to the underside of the leading edge. That's always a line in the golf club. There's always a line that you can contain. So you're going to contain that line in some way in relationship to you. Could be all the way around here. This isn't going to work very well, but you get the idea. That's still a contained line. Okay, so that's the idea of containment. We get that containment by having uh, some opposing forces working from our grip on the club um, against us. So I think the first thing I want to talk about is I can get this contained line without a golf club in my hands. I've talked before about how the grip, it's more like we're gripping ourselves here, okay, than, than gripping the club. I want you to feel that you're gripping yourself more. So even though I, I could put a ton of pressure gripping myself, and the grip pressure itself on the golf club wouldn't necessarily be any different or any more. It might be fractionally more. There will be some extra pressure on the club bleeding out of this extra pressure on yourself. So the simplest way to describe what containment does with this against pressure would be to explain that if I were to put my left palm and push it to the right and take my right index finger and push it to the left, and I do both of those things. If I continue to do both of those things and then that which I'm doing, this point at where they're meeting, that pressure point, if that pressure point were to follow the sequence of the golf swing, which as we'll get into later on, is straight in and then staying in motion until the swing's over. So straight in and stay in motion, never giving that up. Now when I get up here, it would be easy for the swing to stop, or easy for this to stop. But if I endeavour not to allow it to stop, then as it's coming up here to about the furthest I can go, I'm going to have to turn my body and return to where I've come from so that it can continue to stay in motion. What I don't want to do is have these two pressures here, take it in and have it move and then stop and then start it again. I want to feel like it's one motion all the way to the end. Now I'm happy to let it stop here and relax it. 
So basically, I just took uh, a tiny grain of sand and, and pushed it against my palm from this finger and my palm against the grain of sand in this finger, I would have that grain of sand contained for the whole swing. So if I grab a ball, and now if I just stick this ball within my two hands which I've linked together, and I push those two hands together, and then I push my thumbs together, that's me gripping myself. I'm not trying to grip that ball, but I can feel that there's some pressure. I've got that thing contained. So by pushing my fingers together and then pushing my thumbs together, when I push my thumbs together, I feel my fingers sort of almost be pulled apart. And when I push my fingers together, I feel my thumbs get pulled apart. So I want to push both together. And now I have this like a hollow space in my hands. The ball is residing in there. Now if I endeavour to keep this structure in motion and never stopping till the end and relax, that's a contained golf ball in my hands, me gripping myself with the containment which contains the ball. So if I then move on to a golf club, If I've got my fingers are gripping this golf club and my thumbs are gripping my hands, my thumb, my thumbs gripping my hands via the sides of the hand here, we call that the crab, the crabs there. Okay, so I'm gripping myself and I'm gripping, I am gripping the club in my fingers, but I'm gripping myself with everything else. And the grip that my fingers have is that I'm not trying to not trying to wrap it around and, and like hold, hold the club in a squeezing manner. I'm basically again trying to grip myself here. So with these two fingers, I'm trying to get as much, trying to get as much up towards myself gripping that rather than it's not like this. This would be obviously gripping the club in my hand and fingers. I'm trying to grip my own fingers with the tips of my fingers. Same with these as well trying to grip my own fingers and the club just happens to reside inside of that. So that's an important point I want to mention. So when you go for a really firm containment on the club, you really got a very firm grip on yourself. Okay, rather than you're not trying to squeeze the club tighter. Very important point there. So once we take our grip and we've got the containment in there, let's say on a scale of one to ten, I put say six or seven containment in there. Now that creates that line you can see. And now that line, I'm never going to give up. The containment that I've got, I'm never going to give up. Just like I didn't want to give this up, and just like I didn't want to give this up, this, this, and now this are going to do the same thing. And this is going to start in and stay in motion. that's containing the club the whole way. It's like I've got this line of the club is in my hands just as surely as that ball was when I was doing this. Okay, So that's the principle of containment in its most clearly defined form. That's what we're looking to have and we're not looking to ever give it up. Very important point. So the second principle is the idea of a free swinging club and if I've got the containment and I'm never giving that up and I'm going to swing the club freely that has been brought to my attention by a number of people that it sounds like a contradiction and it, I can see where that can easily be understood as a contradiction but I'm going to use again another prop so if I'm going to throw this ball as far as I can I take a certain grip on it and that grip that I take on it I'm never going to give up until I let go of that ball I would say that that ball is contained, but it, when I throw, if I'm going to throw as far as I can, or even just a soft throw, it's going to, the ball's going to move freely. It's not, I'm not trying to position the ball, the ball moves very freely, very, very free. So now that's fully contained, never given up, and swinging freely. Can you see how it's the ball, the tool of the game, in this case a golf club, a 
ball is the tool of a throw. That's never given up. It's contained and it's swung freely. So what is swinging freely? What is a free swing of the club? A free swing of the club is the entire golf club plus the contained hands which are on the golf club. All of that swinging freely in motion, never stopping. That's the principle of a free swinging club. The third principle is how do we balance that? What we want to do is we want to balance it such that we can uh, put more energy in and not have A, the momentum of that free swing disturbed. That's very important. So if I go, if I go in the direction of it, okay, then at some point I'm going to have to stop the motion whether it be stopping the hands, which we've already talked about we don't want to do, because that would give up the free swing and the containment. And we don't want to stop our body and have to change direction. So we want to have, while this is in motion and never stopping, can you see how my body is also never stopping? And the way that works is the body works in total opposition to the contained free swinging club, works in total opposition to it at all times, in motion. Okay. Now I've talked. There's, I've got a lot of videos out there describing different ways to counterbalance, etc. I'm just trying to define this. I'm not going to go into detail about all the ways that um, we can counterbalance it. But suffice it to say that when the when the golf club's out, we're in. Okay. And when the and the golf club's down, we're up. Okay. So I'm up and in. Club's down and out. Okay, when the club gets to the top, it's up and in. So I'm going to be out, and then I'm going to be working down, etc. So it's just a way of being totally away from the golf club at all times. What we're looking for is we're looking for this thing to be in motion, not moving it. Okay? I never want, with this containment, I never want you to think you're going to move your hands, cock, bend, push, pull, any of that. Okay? It's just one thing one thing in motion one time till it's over so that's really the three principles clearly defined and I just want to talk about how why this is so why this is so accurate I'm going to talk about the containment um, aspect of it why it's so accurate uh, and I've got a little demonstration today I'm going to give this a try it was just something that popped into my mind I've been thinking about darts a lot lately and for me, the containment, uh, the containment principle, along with the free swing and the balance, if I apply those three principles to something which is very simple looking motion, such as darts, if I apply uh, that, these three principles to a motion that you can very readily see what's going on, and then see that those three principles are all you need to make any motion, okay? If I was going to just throw these golf balls at this tree um, with with a view of I was throwing darts at the tree, uh, a couple of things I'd do, I'd, I'd apply these three principles. I'd have the ball firmly in my grasp, okay, I'd have pressure on both sides of the ball because if I had more pressure on one side of the ball than the other, it would put a little bit of side spin or it would feel like it's going to leave my hand not on a defined line and I want to define the line that it's going to leave my hand on so I want to keep a lot of pressure on it until I want to keep a lot of pressure on until the, the point at which I want to let it go and then I'll let all that pressure come off and so the ball will fly. Um, I'd like to have a little bit of structure in my body that will guarantee that if I just swing this very freely it's going to go straight. Now in and of itself the fact that it's going to swing freely, okay, the principle of a free swinging tool here the ball being the tool. The principle of a free swinging tool means it's going to go much straighter than if I try and guide it and try and manage it. So in and of itself that gives me a little bit of guarantee that it's going to be straighter. Now the other, the final thing is that I stay in a good solid structure, balanced, and I have a little bit of extra um, guarantee that it's going to go in a certain direction. And to do that I'm going to just be nice and flat to the earth I'm going to feel like my elbow is just a little bit this way and my hand is, my shoulder is going to be a little bit internally rotated, my forearm is going to be a little bit uh, rotated this way to, against that. 
just a little bit. So from there, I'm going to swing it freely and that's going to give me that little bit of extra insurance. So, I'm going to hold this ball very firmly, get myself balanced. I want to have, I want to feel like I've got this thing swinging freely. I don't want to take it back and then, and then add to it, okay? That's what I felt like I did there. It's like I took it back a certain distance and then uh, took it back a certain momentum and then sort of added something to it. And what I take it back, I want to keep going, just one speed. keep that grip on there. If I get a little loose in, in the fingers, I lose control of the ball. As soon as I lose the slightest bit of pressure, if I don't keep real firm pressure on both sides of that, it wants to start going off to the side on me. So just applying these principles, if I don't have a good solid grip on this object that I'm going to throw, then when I let it go, it's going to do I don't know what. If I don't have a solid base and structure, okay, then I'm not sure exactly which line it's going to swing on when it swings freely. But in and of itself, the free swing of this firmly grasped ball and the thing that's firmly grasping it will give me really good control. I can really feel these three principles at work just in this little demonstration. And I hope that makes it clearer what I'm talking about and why this is the way to go to swing, to put the energy of a club that's swinging at 110, 115 miles an hour, whatever it might be, 95 miles an hour, right on a spot every single time. You need to have a good structure in the body and you need to have a good grip of what it is that you're swinging and then swinging it freely will give you the best chance of having it swing the same way every time. I hope that helps you. Cheers. So what I'm going to do here is just basically try to define for you a couple of the things that I use as principles of, of aiming this free swinging contained mass so that it goes into a certain point. Okay, and it, it's really one, one simple principle that I use, and that is that I'm going to be behind the ball in mass in relation to the target, and I'm going to be ahead of the ball in rotation in relation to the target. So if I'm ahead of it in rotation, but I'm behind it in mass, you see that I've got it trapped in one spot. Okay. If I'm behind it in rotation and behind it in mass, I'm not aiming at it. If I'm ahead of it in mass and ahead of it in rotation, I'm not aiming at it. In order to aim at it, if I'm going to be ahead of it in rotation, like every great player has been, slightly ahead in terms of rotation at the point of impact, then you need to be behind the ball. Otherwise, you're not aiming at it. Okay, so if you're going to be on your left side trying to get ahead of the golf ball, Okay, you are going to have to be staying square or closed and the fact that you're ahead of it means that you're aiming behind it so you're going to have to dump something in most cases it's going to be the arm the right arm or the wrist cock in order to get onto that ball but if you're behind it in mass ahead of it in rotation you've got that thing trapped and you can hit it without giving up much of anything in terms of what you've loaded until the point of impact where it will all unload on the ball. Okay, so it's going to unload, generally speaking, at a point from the right side of you to the center, and as it passes your center, that would be the quickest part of the swing. We want that to be just after the ball. So the way to guarantee and ensure that for you is to get behind the ball in mass, ahead of it in rotation when you strike it. You see there, I'm ahead of it in rotation if that's my belt buckle. I'm behind it in mass. That's the center of my mass right there. So I hope that helps you. And along with those three principles, I think you'll find that that's all you really need to do to work on a good golf swing. From there, then you've got the 
rest of the game, which requires a lot of precision, as we know. The game is played out on 200 acres with a ball this big, trying to get into a four and a quarter inch cup 18 times. Very difficult. We know it's not a simple game, but the difficulty is not the swing. The swing is a simple thing that should be as simple in your mind as this. And anybody that wants to make it more complicated than that is only going to be doing themselves an injustice and doing you an injustice as well. Cheers.